Went and saw my grandson a few times over the weekend. He's still in the NICU at the hospital. He's just listening. I'm talking to him. That's great. I told him, I said, you just got to keep growing so you can get out of the hospital. So you can come, come see Pappy. We'll have some fun. I said, we'll have so much fun, you'll crap your pants. And then he got very excited just thinking about it and actually crapped his pants. So, you know, that, that's good. He's looking forward to getting out and coming, hanging out with Pappy. Ah, uh, let's see. Well, let's take a look at our, we're going to finish matrices. Let's take a look at what we got. I'm going to put this up on the screen. We'll probably have some videos that we'll need to change how I share it, but we'll get started this way. Let's see, first hour. Where's, I'm, I'm, I'm all, oh, there it is, right there. I'm combobulated now. At first, I was discombobulated. Let's go scroll all the way down. Man, we've covered a lot this semester so far, haven't we? Look at that. We're way down here. Uh, we are going to find the inverse of a two by two matrix, which we've already looked at some last week. So, because we were determining inverse matrices, find the inverse and then represent a linear system with matrix equation, which we've already done some of that too. Way back up at the beginning, we were doing a little bit of that. Um, and then our quiz four. So we have two assignments and a quiz. And so we're looking at the folder for finding the inverse of a matrix using this determinant and solving equations with inverse matrices. So let's go take a look oh, back at the activity screen. Almost through with all these. There's what we did last week, quiz three. So we start at the folder after quiz three, finding the inverse of a matrix using this determinant. Let's look at that one first. Okay, we have a video lesson and our first assignment, and then we will have another video lesson assignment, and then we have one more video lesson to look at after that. This is representing, this is solving, because we need to know it for our quiz. So we have three video lessons and three assignments here. So let's take a look at our first one. Let's attempt to take the inverse of this two by two matrix, and you'll see that two by two matrices are about the only size of matrices that it's somewhat pleasant to take the inverse of. Anything larger than that, it becomes very unpleasant. So the inverse of a two by two matrix is going to be equal to one over the determinant of the matrix times the adjugate of the matrix, which sounds like a very fancy word, but we'll see for a two by two matrix, it's not too involved. So first let's think about what the determinant of this matrix is. Well, we've seen this before. We just look along the two diagonals. It's three times two minus negative seven times five. So this is going to be equal to one over three times two, three times two minus minus negative seven times five. So minus negative seven times five. And then the adjugate of A, and here I'm really just teaching you the mechanics of it. And it's a little unfortunate that in a typical Algebra two class, you kind of have to just go into the mechanics of it, but at least it'll, this will get us to where we need to go. So the adjugate of A, you literally just need to swap the two elements on this diagonal. So put the two where the three is and three where the two is. So let me, let me, so this element right over here, this three will go right over there. This, this two will go right over here. And then these two elements, you just take the negative of them. So the negative, let me do a new color, the negative of, Actually, I'm running out of colors. The negative of that is negative five. The negative of that is positive seven. So we are left with, this is going to be equal to one over, three times two is six, negative seven times five is negative 35, but then we have this positive over here, so this whole thing becomes plus 35. So six plus 35 is 41. So the determinant of our matrix is 41. We're gonna take one over the determinant and multiply it times our adjugate, times two, negative five, seven, and three. So we get, so this is the drum roll part, two over 41, negative five over 41. I'm just multiplying each of these elements times one over 41. Seven over 41, and three over 41. 
and we are done. Definitely going to want pencil and paper to do this because there's a little bit to that. Let's look at the lesson that goes with that. So let me put that up on the screen. So here's the assignment that goes with that lesson. And this is something I've noticed. Not everybody's logged in. So if you forget to take a screenshot, it won't remember what you did. If you log in when you go to Khan Academy because you forgot to take a screenshot, it'll still have your score. It'll remember you scored that. So make sure you logged in. I still see people that are not logged in when they go there. All right, find the inverse. So here's the assignment that we we'll do. I don't know that I've done any of these yet. Notice it's got my name, Mr. Brock, up at the top because I'm logged in. If it says log in, you're not logged in. All right, ready to practice. So we'll do one or two of these together just to make sure you know. All right, find the inverse of this matrix. So I'm going to write this down because uh, you can do this in your head. Bully to you, but it's easy to make a mistake in your head. So I'm going to do this. That's a good example of how to do this correctly. All right. I don't know that I like that here. Straighten out, straighten out a little bit there. Okay, so 1 over the determinant times the adjective. Not the adjective, the adjective. So 1 over the determinant. Remember we do that by multiplying these and subtracting what these are when they multiply. So negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. 0 times negative 6. So it's just negative 1 18th. Negative 18. 1 over negative 18 is just negative 1 18. And we're going to multiply that times the adjective, which means these two diagonals here, we swap them. So that the 2 moves up in this corner and the negative 9 moves down in that corner. And these stay where they are. They just change signs. So instead of negative 6, it's positive 6. And negative 0 is the same as positive 0. It's just 0. So we're going to multiply that. 1 18th times 2 is negative 2 18ths, which we would probably need to simplify. So that's negative 1 9th. Negative 6 eighteenths, because we just take 6 times 18. Oh, let's see. The only time we have a negative is right down here. So that's the same as negative 1 third. So we'll, we'll simplify it over here. Negative 1 ninth, negative 1 third, 0 times anything. That's still 0. And negative 9 times negative, it would be a positive because it's negative times negative. And 9 18th is just one half, right? So we want our simplified answer. I imagine that's what it's going to be looking for here. Uh, simplified fractions. And it says put it as a decimal. So let's see, 1 ninth. So if we're going to put it as a decimal, it doesn't say how many. It doesn't say how many to put it as. Oh, it's got a calculator built in there too. Oh, it says you might need a calculator. Show calculator. I'm gonna use the calculator. I got the computer. So uh, one ninth, and it was negative. It doesn't say how many decimal. I'm gonna say two decimal points. Negative point one one. I don't know that it wants us to go any farther than that because it doesn't tell us. Uh, negative one third. Well, we know one third is 0.33, and then a zero and positive one half. So let's see. Ah, I want to see what they put as the answer. Oh, wait, no, here it is up here. They showed the video at the bottom, but here's the answer. All right. So they found negative 1 18th, which we did. Oh, they have the exact same answer as we had. Negative 1 9th, negative 1 3rd, 0 and 1 half. And yet they told us to put it in 
decimal or simplified fraction. I guess I should put the simplified fraction since that is one divided by nine. Since that's a repeating decimal, one divided by three. This one I can put is just 0.5 or one half. Let's see if it likes that one. That one's right. Okay, so if you have a repeating fraction, leave it as a fraction. I, I could have put that as one half. So just figuring out how it wants it. We had the right answers, but don't put it in a decimal unless it is actually a decimal that does not repeat. So, so I missed the first problem, it says. So I could just say start over so that I because I want to get four out of four. So we'll do one more together. This time we'll do it properly for a fraction if it's a repeating. So one over the determinant, one over negative four times negative six is 24 minus, oh, times zero. So it's just 1 24th because it's minus zero, minus zero. So 1 24th times, remember these trade places and these, well, zero stays zero. Negative 10 becomes positive 10. So 1 over 24. So negative, negative times a positive. This is a positive this time. So negative 6 over 24, and we'll simplify that. 0, uh, 10 over 24. Positive times positive. And this is a negative. Negative 4 over 24. Let's see. So how does that simplify? Well, 6 over 24 is just negative 1 fourth. 10 over 24 uh, simplifies to just take 2 out of the top and bottom. 5 twelfths. And that is negative 1 over 6. So I'm going to enter all of those as just simplified fractions since it, it lets us do that. So this is negative one fourth. And zero. Oh, I didn't mean decimal. There you go. Negative one fourth. Zero. Five twelfths. And negative one over six. So there you go. That's how you do it. Fortunately, when you multiply uh, times... A fraction, we just have one on top. So you multiply straight across. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 24. 10 times 1 24, 10 times 1. So the multiplying part, even though you have a fraction, is very, very simple because the top is 1 and you multiply it by whole numbers. So you just multiply the top by the whole number. All right, don't make that more difficult. The only difficult part may be simplifying, but these weren't too bad. All right, so we are going to abandon that right now. I won't finish that now. I'll let you look at that later. But get your get your four problems right. Start over if you need to. That's that assignment right there. All right, let's go to this next folder, solving equations with inverse matrices. Let's look at the video lesson on representing linear systems. First, we need to know how to represent it before we can solve it. I have a system of two equations with two unknowns here. And we've seen how to solve this. And there's multiple techniques we've used, substitution, elimination. And we could do that right over here. In fact, you could just add the two, the, the left sides of the equations and the right sides of the equations. The S's would cancel out. Actually, let's just do it to show how that's relatively straightforward for at least this example right over here. You add the left-hand sides. These cancel out. You're left with negative T. Negative T is equal to is equal to 7 plus negative 6 is equal to 1. Or you get that t is equal to negative 1. t is equal to negative 1. And if t is equal to negative 1, this top, this top equation, you could use either one, would simplify to 2 times s. Negative 5 times negative 1 is plus 5. Plus 5 is equal to 7 is equal to, let me use those same colors that we have over there is equal to 7. Or, and we could do this part in our head, 2s must be equal to 2, and that s is equal to 1. 2 times 1 plus 5 is 7. And so we have s 
is equal to one. So that was pretty straightforward. What we're going to do in this video is represent the same system, but we're going to represent it essentially as a matrix equation. And we're going to solve it using inverse matrices. And I, I'll give you a little bit of a, of a warning. It's going to be more involved. It's going to take us more time to this. And you're probably going to say, well, why are we even going through the trouble of it? And the value of what we're going to do in this video is that it's very useful in computation, where you might solve almost the same system over and over and over again. Maybe the left-hand sides are the same, the right hands keep changing. And this might be something that you, you'd, you might see while writing a computer game or while, while working on uh, you know, some type of uh, computer pro problem. And, so, and, and this is a general theme. A lot of the value of matrices are there are ways to represent problems, mathematical problems, ways to represent data. And, they, they're, and, and then we can use matrix operations, matrix equations to essentially manipulate them in appropriate ways if we're, for the most part, writing computer programs or things like computer programs. So bear with me. You will enjoy it eventually, what we're about to do. And, and one day, you will see that it is actually quite useful. So the first thing we need to see or need to appreciate is that this can be represented by a matrix equation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coefficients here. So I'm going to take the coefficients here. So 2, negative 5. 2, negative 5, negative 2, negative 2, and 4, and positive 4. So all I've done is I've taken the coefficients here. And I'm going to claim that that times the column vector, column vector st, s, and t, being equal to, being equal to the column vector, being equal to the column vector 7, negative 6, 7, negative 6 is the exact same thing as what we have right over here. These are representing the same constraints on the variable s and t. And you say, well, I don't, I don't quite get that. And if you're saying you don't quite get that, multiply this out. Multiply this out and think about which entries they need to be equal to when you multiply it out. And you would see, well, this entry, this first row, first column, that's going to be this row. We're going to be dealing with this row and that column. So if you think about it, it's going to be this this tells us that 2, 2 times s, 2 times s plus negative 5 times t, so I could say minus 5 times t must be equal to the first entry up here. First row, first column is equal to 7. All I did is I multiplied. I dealt with the first row, first column, and said, well, when I, when I take essentially the dot product of those, and we, if you don't know what a dot product is, don't worry, we'll explain it other places. It's essentially what I just did here. The first, and the first entry here times the first entry, the second entry here times the second entry, and we add them together, that that must be equal to 7. But when you do that, you essentially construct this first equation. And when you do it with the second row and this column, you construct the second equation. You get negative 2 times s, negative 2 times s, plus 4 times t, plus 4 times t, 4 times t is equal to negative 6. Is equal to negative 6. Is equal to negative 6. So hopefully you appreciate that this contains the same information as that. And there's other ways that I could have done it. For example, you could have, instead of writing it this way, I obviously, this system is obviously the same thing, is obviously the same thing as, and actually let me just, copy and paste it is the same thing as, so copy and paste is the same thing as this system where I'm really just swapping. So once again, copy and paste. I'm just, obviously I've written the second one first and I've written the first one second. So these, this is obviously the same system. And so if I wanted to construct a matrix equation with this system, I would just swap all of the rows. The first row here would be negative two, four, well, I would swap the rows for the coefficients, but I would still keep the s and t's in the same order. And you could do that. Try to try to re represent this right over here as a matrix equation. You would have the matrix here would be negative 2, 4, 2, negative 5, and this would be negative 6, 7. But now that we've set this up, how do we actually solve something like this? Why, why do we even do this? And to think about this, let's actually think about it in terms of literally a matrix equation. So let's say that A, the matrix A, is this thing right over here. This thing over here is the matrix A. 
let's say that this right over here, this is the column vector x. And since, so I'll write it as a vector x right over here. So you have the column vector x. And then this right over here, you could say that this is equal, and let's call this the column vector b. So this is equal to the column vector b. So we're essentially saying that a, the matrix A, times the column vector x is equal to, is equal to the column vector B. Let me write that again right over here, just to emphasize it. The matrix A times the column vector x is going to be equal to, is equal to the column vector B. And so this is what they're talking about when they say a matrix equation. And actually, even before we even think about computation and computer graphics and all of that, you will see a lot of things like this in physics, where they're speaking in general terms, where they might not even be specifying the dimensions of the matrix or the dimensions of this vector, but they're talking about some general property in, say, physics. And so you will see vector or matrix vector equations like this a lot as you get into higher and higher sciences. But once again, let, let, let's, let's just go back to our, our, our core issue of how do we actually solve this? Well, one way you could think about it, we've already seen that if a matrix is invertible, that means that there's a matrix A inverse that exists such that A inverse times A is equal to the identity, is equal to the identity matrix. So what if we multiplied the left-hand sides of both sides of this equation by A inverse? Remember, order matters when we are multiplying matrices. So we multiply the left-hand sides of both sides of the equation by A inverse, which would get us A inverse times A times X is equal to, is equal to, a inverse, remember, I'm multiplying the left-hand sides of both equations, A inverse times the column vector B. Now why is this interesting? Well, we just said that the inverse times A, assuming that A is invertible, that this right over here is going to be equal to the identity matrix. So that's going to be the identity matrix times column vector, column vector X, and that's going to be equal to, that's going to be equal to this stuff. That's going to be equal to that. So let me just copy and paste that. That's going to be equal to that. Now why is that interesting? Well, the identity matrix times some, some other matrix, this column vector essentially is a, a two by one matrix, that's just going to be this column vector again. So it's just going to simplify to that our column vector is equal to, our column vector is equal to the inverse matrix times our column vector, or our, co or our column vector x is equal to the inverse matrix times the column vector b. And so once again, emphasizing why is this useful? Well, yes, you do have to go through the trouble of calculating a inverse, but once you've done that, you could keep swapping in different, different b's. You know, this one is seven, negative six, but you could have other b's here. And if you're running a computer program, you want to do this over and over again, you just have to do multiple matrix multiplications. So I'll leave that thought here. I, I've realized that I'm approaching 10 minutes, which I never like to cross in these videos. In the next video, we'll actually compute what A inverse is and calculate what the solution vector x is. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video there. But first, let's do the assignment that goes with this one. On representing, representing is relatively simple if you were paying attention. All right, here we go. Four questions. Consider this systems of equation. 10x plus 11y minus 12z equals negative 18, et cetera, et cetera. And it can be represented by this x, y, z. So it wants us to find a and b. b is the 3D vector. So the A is the matrix created by these three equations. So all we have to do is just take the coefficients. 10, 11, negative 12. 10, 11, negative 12. What's the second one? 6, negative 8, negative 2. 6, negative 8, negative 2. And the last one, 4, negative 6, negative 8. 4, negative 6, negative 8. And they equal negative 18, 10, and 12.
and that's it. That's how we represent the system of equations right here. Check. It's just a matter of copying the numbers from the coefficients. Let's try another one. Here's our new equation. 6x, y, and z. So 6, 1, and 9. 6, 1, 9. 2, 8, and 1. Don't let them fool you. That's a 1. And 9, negative 2, and 6. 9, negative 2, and 6. And it equals 10, negative 11, 13. Check. Let's see if they put a tricky one on us. Okay, I knew they'd do this. Look, it says it's X, Y, and Z. But if you look at this first equation, do you see the X, Y, and Z? I see the X, I see the Y. What's the coefficient of Z? X is 6, Y is 5. Z must be 0 because there's none of them there. What about this one? There's a Y and a Z. There's no X. X must be 0. Then there's negative 10 for the Y, and there's 22 for the Z. And then the last one, we've got an X and a Z, but there's no Y. So let's do 4, 0 for the Y, negative 6. And it equals 22, 24, negative 4. 4. All right, let's see. See, that's what you just put zeros as coefficients of any missing variables. And then another easy one at the end. Might as well finish it. I've done all the others, right? Negative 8, 6, 2. Uh, 3, 5, 9. And 12, 16, 8. Equals 22, negative 4, and 10. Not quite yet. What did I miss? Negative 8, 6, and 2, and 22. Oh, that's a, it's supposed to be a 3. I put a 6. There it was. All right, 4-4. Four, four. Let's close that. One more lesson to look at here, solving linear systems. Now we're actually going to solve it. So we're going to go through the steps to solve it. So pay attention because this we'll look at the quiz here in a moment. And I'm betting we got one on the quiz. Take a system of two equations with two unknowns and represent it as a matrix equation where the matrix A is, are the coefficients here on the left-hand side. The column vector X has our two unknown variables, S and T. And then the column vector B is essentially representing the right-hand side over here. And what was interesting about it, we, well then that would be the equation A, the matrix A times the column vector X being equal to the column vector B. And what was interesting about that is we saw, well look, if A is invertible, we can multiply both the, both the left and the right hand sides of the equation, and we have to multiply them on the left hand sides of, of their respective sides by A inverse, because remember, matrix multi when matrix multiplication order matters, so we're multiplying the left hand side of both sides of the equation. If we do that, then we can get to essentially solving for the unknown column vector. If we know what column vector x is, then we know what s and t are, and then we've essentially solved the system of equations. So now let's actually do that. Let's actually figure out what A inverse is and multiply that times the column vector B to figure out what the column vector X is and, and what S and T are. So A inverse, A inverse is equal to one over the determinant of A. The determinant of A it for, a, for a two by two here is going to be two times four minus negative two times negative five. So it's going to be 8 minus positive 10. 8 minus positive 10, which would be negative 2. So this would become negative 2 right over here. Once again, 2 times 4 is 8 minus negative 2 times negative 5. So minus positive 10, which gets us negative 2. And you multiply 1 over the determinant times what is sometimes called the adjoint of A which is essentially swapping the, t the top left and bottom right, or at least for a two by two matrix. So this would be a four, this would be a 
two, notice I just swapped these, and making these two negative, the negative of, of what they already are. So this is from a negative two, this is going to become a positive two, and this right over here is going to become a positive five. If all of this looks completely unfamiliar to you, you might want to review the tutorial on inverting matrices, because that's all I'm doing here. And so A inverse is going to be equal to, A inverse is going to be equal to, let's see, this is negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. Negative 1 half, negative 1 half times 5 is negative 2.5 negative 2.5, and negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1, negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. So that's A inverse right over here. So now let's multiply A inverse times our column vector 7, negative 6. So let's do that. So this is A inverse, I'll rewrite it. Negative 2, negative 2.5, negative 1, negative 1, times 7 and negative 6 times, I'll just write them all in white here now, seven, negative six, we've had a lot of practice multiplying, multiplying matrices. So what is this going to be equal to? So the first entry is going to be negative two times seven, which is negative 14, plus negative 2.5 times negative six. So let's see, that's going to be positive, that's going to be 12 plus another three, so it's going to be plus 15 plus 15. Negative 2.5 times negative 6 is positive 15. And then we're going to have negative 1 times 7, which is negative 7, plus negative 1 times negative 6. Well, that is positive 6. And so our the product, A inverse B, which is the same thing as the column vector X, is equal to, we deserve a little bit of a drum roll now, the column vector 1, negative 1. So we have just shown that this is equal to one, negative one, or that x is equal to one, negative one, or we could even say that the column vector, the column vector st, s, column vector with the entries s and t is equal to, is equal to one, negative one, is equal to one, negative one, which is another way of saying that s is equal to one and t is equal to negative one. And I know what you're saying. I said this in the last video and I'll say it again in this video. You're like, well, you know, it was so much easier to just solve the system directly just with using elimination or using substitution. And I agree with you. But it is, this is a useful technique because when you are doing problems in computation, there may be situations where you have the left-hand side of the system is stays the same, but there's a many, many, many different values for the right-hand side of the system. And so it might be easier to just compute the inverse once and just keep multiplying, keep multiplying this inverse times the different, the, the, what we have on the right-hand side. And you know, you probably are familiar with, you know, some types of, you know, you have graphics processors and graphics cards on computers and they talk about special graphics processors. What these are really all about are the hardware that is special purpose for really fast matrix multiplication. Because when you're doing graphics processing, when you're thinking about modeling things in three dimensions and you're doing all these transformations, you're really just doing a lot of matrix multiplications really, really, really fast in real time so that to the user playing the game or whatever they're doing, it feels like they're in some type of a you know, 3D real-time reality. So anyway, I just want to point that out. This wouldn't be, you know, if I, if, if, if the, if I saw this just randomly, I, my instincts would be to solve this with elimination. But this, this ability to think of this as a, as a matrix equation is, is a very, very useful concept. One, actually, not just in computation, but also as you go into higher level sciences, especially physics, you will see a lot of matrix vector equations like this that kind of speak in generalities. And it's really important to think about what these actually represent and how they can actually be solved. All right, there you have it. How to solve linear equations using matrices. Let me put this up and we'll look at the quiz and that'll be the last assignment we have this week. So we go to the next thing here. Quiz number four, when we start it, let's take a look at what all we're gonna have to do here. Consider this system of equations 
This is what we just did on representing this with matrices. So that's the first question. Represent this system of equations right here as two matrices. All right, so that's not right. We just did that. Uh, here's another one. Consider this system of equations. Represent it. All right. Here's another one. Three in a row. Oh, so we're not going to have to solve any of them. It's just all about can you represent systems of equations? Equation number four. Uh, got anything harder? Take anything harder out of it. So just four questions. You guys ought to be able to kill that. Do well. So you know how to solve it, but we're not going to quiz you on it. Made life just a little bit easier on you as we finish up. This is our last week in matrices. We're going to move on to something else uh, to finish up our school year, or uh, should we say finish up your high school years for all of you seniors, because many of you are going to be gone in a month. So finish up matrices this week. We'll fill in the rest of the gap starting next week. And you guys have a fabulous week. This is a B day Friday. So I'll be here Wednesday for anyone whose grades below 70%, which, gosh, it wasn't a whole lot of you because uh, you guys got stuff turned in. That's good. You guys are staying on top of it. Let me take a look and see right now if we got anyone that would need to be here. Uh, right now, nobody has a grade below 70%. Good job, guys. I think you're my only class that's achieved that now. So if you're missing anything, go ahead and turn it in. Get your grade even higher because we're getting to the end of the year. But so far, uh, great job, guys. Just you only have to come Wednesday if you have questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next week.